what you are doing at Google and what you're about to go do now. I actually go to the office every single day. Extremely generous remote policy. And is it true that all the comp is flat 900K? Hello world, hello friends. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about tech and travel. Today I'm here with Maddie and we're in Vegas for CES. So Maddie's gonna share with us her journey from going from Google software engineer to Airbnb software engineer, and now it's fully remote and sounds really cool. But even more excitingly, Maddie just left Google to go to a better offer. And we're gonna talk all about why she left, what she's doing now, the interview process for SWE, and everything in between. Everything that you might be curious about if you're someone who's looking to switch roles, uh, especially in 2025, we have a lot of tea to spill. Leave your questions below if you have any more questions because now I'm gonna see Maddie way more often now that she's not grinding leak code and we're happy to do a part two or answer your questions in the comments. And we're both gonna be doing way more YouTube. Make sure to check out her channels below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And without further ado, let's hear all about your transition. So I'm super excited because I actually don't even know half of the stuff that we're gonna talk about. Like yeah, I haven't exclusive. seen her. Yeah, this is an exclusive. <laughs> Give us the elevator pitch on what you were doing at Google and what you're about to go do now. Thank you, Delia. I'm Maddie, I'm a software engineer at Google. I used to be on Google Ads, working on the image ads on google.com and on shopping on google.com. I will now move to Airbnb as a senior software engineer on the Cities team working on regulatory products. Okay, so first tell us, why did you decide to leave Google and go to Airbnb? For those of you who may know or may not know, I've been at Google for about four and a half years, a bit under four and a half years now. I felt like it was a about time to try something new and don't get me wrong I love Google I love all the people there and I've had a really great time like Delia knows like I spent literally all my time there right but I literally she lives at Google I spend like she lives at Google campus <laughs> I spend more time at Google than I do at my own place for sure <laughs> essentially I just felt like the time was right and I also kind of hit my four-year cliff so I think Google kind of changed their compensation modeling since I joined but when I joined my initial grant was quite a lot of stock and it was evenly split within the first four years. So once that four year cliff hits, then you get less stock um, and then your comp drops. So that was part of the reason why. And the best way to make more money is to get a new job. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and yes. Still holds <laughs> true in 2025. Yeah, and then I guess, yeah, finally, I felt as though I don't do a lot of things that real adults do. Like I don't cook. <laughs> I don't cook, I don't, I don't, I don't clean. Google pays my phone plan. I don't do laundry, I do it at Google, so. I figured it was about time I tried to grow up and be a real adult. This is the first time she's paying for a phone plan in four and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> which is like wild. Yeah. I pay for two phone plans. <laughs> what am I even doing with my life? Yeah. I do miss the Google phone plan. That was, that was a good plan. So was there a defining moment when you realized you wanted to leave Google? And was it mainly professional? Like you wanted more moolah and uh, change of pace? Or was it also personal? I think it was a mix, to be honest. Like, I don't think compensation, like money, is the most important thing um, to me. I think the two most important things are always learning in an environment and like the people I work with. And don't get me wrong, I love my current teammates. But over the last year, because of the aforementioned four year cliff, I realized a lot of my friends were leaving for, from Google for other places. You know, like, you know, if all of your friends jump off a cliff, would I jump off? Yes. But essentially, I felt as it was time for me to at least look further, like look externally, because I feel like I was becoming more and more complacent at Google. And I think Google is a great place to be. And I learned a lot here, but I felt as though I could see myself stay at Google forever and being happy, mm -hmm. but I feel like I wouldn't develop as much as Edge and experience new things. So I just forced myself to look externally after that four year mark. And in terms of learning, I think Google has its own pros and cons for what stack it has. So we have great internal tooling, great technologies, but one of the cons is that we don't often use industry standard like techniques and industry standard stack. And that I think it makes it easier to develop within Google, but Personally, it makes it harder to onboard onto something new if you are not familiar with what the industry typically uses. So because of that, I really wanted to try to find an opportunity where I would just learn a new stack and see how it went essentially. So in conclusion, two major reasons. One, just friends, like wanted to see, wanted to go where my friends go. 
and two, wanted to learn new things. Okay, can you tell us about the interview process for Airbnb? Because you also interviewed at Patreon and OpenAI and a whole bunch of other places. So give us the tea on what the interview process has looked like now. For context, I interviewed for the Senior Self Engineer Loop. It's pretty standard, I think. I had an intro call with the recruiter. After that, I had a couple of phone screens. When I passed those, I went to the on-site. The on-site is like the final round, and it's usually virtual in most companies nowadays, I think. It didn't used to be virtual before the pandemic. But anyway, at the on-site, I had one system design round and a couple of coding rounds. Airbnb is also special in that it does um, a code review round, and it does, I guess, it does a code review round and it really emphasizes its core values in a behavioral round. So the code review round is essentially Airbnb will generate a mock repo on GitHub with sample PRs and then you just comment on the PRs like you're giving a code review. So I oh, think that's, that's so a, cute. I love that. Yeah, I think that's a really innovative way that's to, awesome. to interview that isn't just like leak code, leak code, leak code, you know? So yeah, it really it's like, how will you work with teams? How hard are you going to knit me? <laughs> yeah, and then the second one, um, core value. So all companies usually do behavior interviews. Um, Airbnb in particular really, really values its core values. So they gave us a list of four <laughs> values. I'm saying values a lot. <laughs> they gave me a list of four values and essentially- Comment um, how many times she said values <laughs> and you will win some sort of prize. Yes, approval. <laughs> <laughs> My personal approval. I got a sheet of four values and basically was asked a bunch of behavioral questions based on those values. And what about the OpenAI interview? I'm really curious yeah. about that one. That one is also pretty standard. The first round, there was a system design question and then there was a coding question. After I passed those, I got to the on-site. And the on-site was one technical prowess round where you essentially walk through a project that you've done. After that, I had a behavioral round with one of the hiring managers and another behavioral round with one of the cross-functional members. So in my case, a product manager and finally a front-end round. And is it true that all the comp is flat 900K? No. Okay. I mean, they have, I don't quite understand their, to be honest, their compensation structure, but they have um, levels of FYI, we'll show you some of it. Essentially, they have this thing called PPU, which is different from your normal equity. And I'm, I'm not too clear how it works personally, but yeah, it's, it's different based on level. Okay, cool. And do you mind sharing where you were before and like what levels FYI says you get at Airbnb? So at Google, I was a mid-level engineer and levels at FYI says the average one makes around 287 total compensation. Um, at Airbnb, I'm now a senior self engineer and levels at FYI says that we make around 452K total comp. That's pretty good jump. Nice. Yeah, that's that's already reason enough. <laughs> well, okay, like again, it's not, it's, know, it's not about the money for me, it's about learning and about the people. Yes, ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted to make API calls <laughs> and work on regulatory systems, <laughs> helping people rent out their apartments. <laughs> what are you going to miss most about working at Google? This is going to sound really weird, I guess, but I really like the gyms at Google. Like the only question I asked my recruiter at Google when I signed the offer is, is there gonna be a gym at my office? Cause I go to the gym every single day. I actually go to the office every single day because I go to the gym every single day. And it- When I first met Maddie, when I first stayed at her place, she did not have towels. She was like, oh wait, let me check if I have a towel to give you. I was like, what do you mean you don't own towels? And she's like, yeah, I only shower at Google. And I thought that was the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like this woman doesn't have towels <laughs> because she just goes to the gym every day or to the Google every day. Yeah, it's still true. I still don't have it's my own towel. It's still true. I, she I doesn't have a have... special guest towel just for Delia. She literally Kipachi. got towels just for me. <laughs> like that's, that's best a, friendship. That's true friendship. That's yes. true friendship. <laughs> buying towels. <laughs> <laughs> the bar is so low these days. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> that was four years ago. Now we've bought more than just towels, okay? How do you think the industry is shifting towards like what makes somewhere a good workplace? I really like Google. Um, I think that that is a bit personal, like what's the best place for someone to work? Some of the people I graduated with really wouldn't have liked Google just because we were looking for different things in mm -hmm. a workplace. I think Airbnb did shift toward more remote friendly. I'll say that Google is not the most friendly about remote work. Um, Delia can maybe talk about this either here or in a later video, but I think so. Airbnb has an extremely generous remote policy for 
Airbnb has a really generous remote policy versus for Google. Um, you have to go through like processes to get like remote work. And even though they are really good, like I went through this pretty hardcore HR process, but then they let me work from Europe for six months. Yeah, so I think um, a difference, like I don't think it's necessarily good or bad, just like a difference I'm seeing is that Airbnb offered me remote, like just by default, I didn't have to ask for it. That's Versus amazing. for Google, if you want to go remote, you have to file a lot of paperwork and talk yeah. to your director and things like that. According, according to the pamphlets. According to what my recruiter said, for Airbnb, there's a, a lot of countries that you can work at remotely as long as you work less than 90 days in any calendar year. So theoretically, you could work like in 12 different countries, one month each, and that'd be totally cool and you'd be making American money. Oh, I didn't fully oh. understand that. That's Wait. what that's what the pamphlet wow. said. I'm not sure Holy if it's true. If that's true, that's wild. I mean, they are a travel first company. Like, I don't even have rent. I just have Airbnbs, you know? It's like a digital nomads app. Yeah, and so I would hope they have something yeah, like that. Yeah, and like when I was talking to my manager and my coworkers, a lot of them are remote. I think one of them is a digital nomad, so I think they really do like exemplify what they promise. Wow, maybe I should work at Airbnb. Airbnb, you're doing a great job. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay, and what are the key takeaways that you learned during the interview process that you would give to anyone who's looking for a job right now, looking for a career switch right now? Give us your words of wisdom. Yeah, I would say, honestly, like don't let any rejections discourage you. I know the job market is not very good right now, but you just gotta keep on grinding. Um, honestly, she grinded hard. Yeah. She was gra She was like, we can't hang out for months because I need to study. Yeah, it was a bit unfortunate timing because I was also like quite sick for a couple of weeks during that time. I got COVID, so I was like, you know, doing work, doing interview prep at the night, getting sick, whole thing, immune system was very not good, but I think it worked out in the end. So definitely grind. Um, I know lead code is not people's favorite, but definitely recommend doing all the lead code you can. Um, mediums and hards usually for senior roles, I would recommend. I also personally write down every single question that I'm asked. And I don't tell other people these, but it's like for my own personal benefit so that when I want to interview for another company, I can use those previous questions to prep as real questions that were asked in real interviews. And finally, I would be proactive in reaching out to recruiters. Don't just wait for um, recruiters to reach out to you. Definitely apply to things and send out your resume. Really a numbers game, but if you think about it, you only just need one yes. Doesn't matter how many rejections you get. That's one right. Yes. Every rejection is closer to the yes. Indeed. And every rejection is redirection. It just wasn't correct, but you gotta put yourself out there. Anyway, thank you so much, Maddie. This was really insightful and I'm happy that I now know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for having me, Delia. Yeah, and thank you for coming to CES. We literally just landed like a few hours ago and CES was already so fun. Like we've both already tried the world's first electric skates. Oh yeah, that was so fun. That was so fun. Tomorrow but if fun. you have any questions about Maddie's journey, like interviews or anything, leave it down below. We are happy to make another video at some point because now that she's not grinding leak code, I'm gonna see you way more. Happy to answer any of your questions at some point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out Maddie's channels below. Make sure you're subscribing because there's gonna be a lot more videos this year. That's both of our New Year's resolutions that we're gonna be on YouTube and we're gonna keep each other accountable. So you will see a lot more of our faces on here, whether you like it or not. Leave leave your um, questions and everything down below. Subscribe, like the video. I think we've said all the things we need to. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.